Well, in the, in the current understanding of ADHD, what's happened is when someone meets the criteria for this sort of widespread problem, which is problems with hyperactivity, inattention, or impulsivity, they're placed on a stimulant medication, typically Ritalin, Adderall, amphetamine compounds, which are addicting and had a lot of risks and, and concerns. They're placed on those medications, and what we see is a short-term behavioral improvement. But what, there's really no evidence that there's any long-term improvement to educational outcome. There's no long-term improvement to educational success. My approach to ADHD is that it's not one simple illness, but it's a wastebasket of many different problems. There's inattentive ADHD, there's hyperactive ADHD, there's ADHD that's a combined form. For example, when we look at brainwave patterns, we see that there's at least six different distinct types of ADHD. And you can't treat that all the same. If you put someone who has an anxious overlay on AD, uh, of their ADHD on stimulant medications, they stop sleeping, they stop eating, and things get much worse. So what we do is we try to look under the hood, try to find out what specifically is going on with them. I've outlined this quite in depth in the textbook that I wrote on children's mental health called Mental Health for the Whole Child. And in that, I outline sort of how we have to look at these different distinct subtypes of ADHD to understand what's going on. Sometimes it's diet, sometimes it's electronic stimulation, sometimes it's chaos in the household, sometimes it's sleep issues, sometimes it's biochemistry and hormones. And although we can get a simple short-term improvement with stimulant medicines, I don't think that's the way to do it. We need to understand what's going on with the person, customize, individualize their care, and support them to real success.